All right, so we're here to check out an air conditioner. It isn't cooling well. Basically, it seems that uh, it got rather warm in the waiting room. And my best guess is it's this uh, area right here. So we're gonna, unfortunately, since they're all crammed together, I'm gonna make an educated guess. It might be one of these, it really stinks when they don't label crap. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna assume this is probably it. We're gonna turn it off, see if the thermostat goes blank. That's another generic way you could do it. This is gonna seem like it's a little bit overkill but I'm trying to get this done quickly and I hate wasting a crap load of time. But this is a uh, tracer unit. You can use these on data and you can use them on telephone. Telephone was the big thing they were most common for. Basically you just uh, turn it on, you either get solid or you can set it for a beep. And we put it on thermostat wire, and we'll go up on the roof, and this is analog. I also got one that I use for electrical tracing, too, by idea. So, as you've seen, the bottom thermostat was this one here that was dead. So obviously it's not this one. So we'll go ahead and turn that back on before we forget. Obviously probably wasn't this one because this one's still running. This is great. Such a lot of wasted time. Look at that. There it is. Is that simple or what? It's a Pro 3000 probe. I'll put a link. Actually, check the toolbox section of my tools. I'll put a link to that to the Amazon link. You can help support the channel. But what I did is I just picked G and W because I knew they would probably not be shorted together up here in the circuit board. They are, but they aren't. So this is the waiting room. So we'll actually write it on there, just the waiting room with the paint marker, which it'll last for a while. Now that we know which unit's which, now if you notice when we got up here, this unit wasn't running. So let's go ahead and check high voltage and see if there's any issues with that, just for giggles. The thermostat had power, but don't necessarily mean that that's anything in particular going on right. 215, 217, 217. So high voltage is good. This one here, is got fan operation but i have no compressor so we can find out if the signal's getting up here or not i don't have anything on that one i do have it on r so i ain't got nothing coming from y going off the common on the transfer yeah i do now i do yeah so i got nothing there on that but, look at all this horn swaggle garbage. This goes over to a pressure switch. Ah, look at that, Did you see that? Always like people that can't afford a good pair of crimpers. That's nice stuff right there. Just smash it. Comes in, goes to a black one, goes into all this flipping mess. What a freaking joke. So basically blue goes to the low pressure switch, goes over to the high pressure switch, and comes back on T1. I see the high, but I don't see the low pressure switch. There it is. I think it's there hidden inside there. So there it is, it just tried to start again. And that time I didn't touch anything. At this point, I'm just gonna kill the power. We're gonna go through and check these switches, which the blue one comes into here. This is such a mess. Clean this stuff up. One connection here, one connection here. Connections galore. What we can do is bypass that garbage. Basically, this comes out of here. 
on that terminal. Comes back on black. Or on blue, I should say. So, go to like that. Okay, we'll go a little bit wider, that way you can get a better view of it. It's not super wide. So basically just bypassed all the circuits. And that's low pressure switch coming into here. I don't see any shorted wires. Okay, might as well check our delta T on this. See what we got going on here. is just a bad pressure switch. Seventeen degree split on this tr running twenty nine degree of app. Charge is probably fine. Not where I think it should be at, but it's an O four. So you know it's only sixteen years old. Got 71 degree air coming in, 52 going out. It's not all bad. Let's say we're fine. So our biggest issue we got going on here was mainly it wasn't running because of the pressure switch. Now let's see if we can figure out what's going on with which one it is. Um, I've thought about building a device that uses like a D battery or something like that and you can put a load on the switch because what you'll run into with these switches is they'll, you know, you're putting less than a couple volts with no amperage at all behind it when you're checking resistance. So if you put a load on it, say you, you know, something the, that pulls maybe an amp of current, you can do the resistance uh, calculations. You could make the switch open up once it has a little bit of a, you know, some amperage on it. So for right now, we'll check resistance again, but it's gonna show probably closed, which is why it acted up once it's put under a load. Yeah, see, resistance is not always reliable because there's no load on it. Now to double check that, you can come over here and check your amperage on your contactor for giggles, and just see what exactly it's pulling, which, generally is not real high so you're pulling 2.2 amps 0.3 amps so we don't have excessive current so that's not the problem honestly I feel like just replace both pressure switches and be done with it they're uh, not going to replace these units anytime soon so you might as well just get them both replaced it's uh, if one went out is the other one getting ready to go out so you can consider that preventative maintenance I'll call and see if they've got them available so I just called the distributor they don't have either one of them in stock um, cost for both pressure switches is 30 bucks so I'm just going to replace both of them uh, and then uh, we'll come back for right now we're going to go ahead and leave this bypassed to get them by so we're going to wire, wire this thing back up so it's not across this panel like it is while we're here, we got a couple other units to check out. Basically, we had someone out here to do the maintenance and they found some weak capacitors and a few different issues with the units maybe not performing quite right. So we're gonna go ahead and check it out. This one here was slow to cool. Okay, I just went downstairs and turned them all on. I only went like two degrees down. Same thing here, let's put the probes in here and check temps of course it could be just stabilizing gotta love the old 410 like i said before it will trick you into going and grabbing your refrigerant bottle and about the time you get back it will end up being okay so from what i'm seeing here it looks really good 17 and a half degree split and 35 vap and 91 condenser 
Not bad. That all can be thrown off depending on where you take your measurements at. I see some of these people sticking the thermometers in the screw hole of the 5 16th hole and stuff, and air is funny. It doesn't uh, go everywhere equally. So your best place is in the middle of the duck if possible. It just really depends on how the air is bending and twisting and everything else. So that right there on this unit is fine, no problems at all. This unit here, the guy found the capacitor weak. So came up here and checked it. And sure enough, it checked out a little bit weak. So we're gonna go ahead and change it. This is another one of those dual capacitors that carrier likes to use, which I don't stock on my truck, but there's nothing wrong with using two individual ones. So as you'll be able to see, we've got eight on the one, 7.8 on the other, it's rated for 10. So it's getting weak. Don't wait till it fails. You know the old saying, you were just out here. So just going to get them some new ones on there. We've got to split the common away from them. And we'll get that back in place. The yeller we'll put there. Then we'll just make a jumper for the other one. I usually try to carry some wire in my bag just in case. But as you know, carrier likes to put 60 foot of wire here for their fans so what we ended up doing was just trimming a little section off of there we'll go ahead and put a new crimp on on it and then we'll put a crimp on on the other side of the other and that will make us a nice little jumper which will save us a trip back to the truck they had three wires on there otherwise we would have had to we could have just split that yellow one but that'll end up going back in there and we brought a little bit of strap so that it's not just dangling in there there's all kinds of capacitor bandits out there that just throw the spin there wherever they can make it fit. And that's got to be better than that. There you go. Got those capacitors in place. They're not going to go anywhere. There it's not perfectly level, but you know, it's better than setting inside of a box loose inside the compartment, which is some of the crap I've been seeing online lately. I mean, it's bothering me that it's, it's turned. See, that's the kind of crap it just bothers me. So let's trim that up so that's a little more straight. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to use a tapping screw to get it to their level. And that screw's not really pointy on the end, so I doubt. I'm gonna put this into the warp speed and see if we can make this thing bore through it. Do the hole ahead of time. Look at that. That's stage three on this puppy, man. She's just wicked. That thing wasn't even sharp. It just sucked it right through. That's why these guys strip the freaking screws out like they do. They have no finger control. watched one guy not too long ago every one of them now after it stopped clicking and he stripped it completely out then he would go on to the next one it's like dude you must be a hit with the women you have no finger control so anyhow you gotta have finger control that sounds like a dave song finger control kind of like uh the prince song the P control sounds about like something Dave could do. Finger control. Crazy Dave Norcal doing the finger control song. That'd be kind of cool. I think that'd be neat. So anyhow, this has been modified and corrected. So it's wonderful. Go ahead and put it back together. We got one more magnificent capacitor to change and it's on a blower motor on one of these. And then that'll wrap this up. Got to put it on finger control mode. See, you can use a, an impact. You just got to have finger control. Mm -hmm.